start. <laughs> Hi, I'm Celeste from Bookish and Bell. Welcome to another video. It's good to have you here. So today I would just like to talk a little bit about some of my top tips for avoiding spending money on clothing, spending too much money on clothing or buying too many clothes, and then taking you through my own personal clothing wish list, which is one of the practices that I have that helps me avoid spending too much too soon or buying things that I don't actually want. So first the tips, we'll get through these really quickly. The first one is that you shouldn't buy something until you need it. Don't buy in anticipation of a need because it might turn out that that need isn't real. So a few months ago, I got a gym membership and I started working out there regularly. And when I got the gym membership, of course, I thought, oh, I might need more gym outfits or gym bag, water bottle, blah, 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 blah. And the main thing that I thought was a good example for this video is the water bottle. That seems practical. Okay, of course I'm going to need a water bottle if I'm going to the gym, right? I almost bought one too, but I was like, not finding one that I really loved, so I was just sort of sitting on it for a while. Then I kept going to the gym and I kept not needing a water bottle because they have water fountains there. Like, maybe I would need a water bottle if I was someone who got on the treadmill for like an hour or something. Then having it right there would probably make sense. But I mostly am lifting weights and doing the rowing machine, which is like a really short period of time that you can do it before you die. So the water fountain turns out to be all that I need. The next tip and this goes hand in hand, is don't buy things right away. So if you see something and you're pretty sure you need it, or you want it, <laughs> just don't buy it immediately. Maybe wait a day, a week, an hour. Maybe take it up and have them hold it at the store and then go and have your lunch and you can come back, right? Just generally, don't impulsively buy a thing. I, it sounds kind of obvious, but I think a lot of us don't really take that advice. We feel like, it's more convenient to buy it now while I'm here, or sometimes I think we even think, I'll forget about it if I don't buy it now. If you're going to forget about it, you don't need to own it. The next thing is don't shop with enablers. So if you are going to the mall to try on clothing or something, don't bring that friend who always says, get it, you should get it, you should totally get it, it looks amazing on you. It's nice, but shopping can sometimes be a social interaction, a, a thing to do with friends, but if you're still struggling with not buying things that you know you shouldn't buy, then maybe, at least temporarily, go by yourself. Or go with your friend who's a good role model for you, who also has the same intentions and isn't going to be pressuring you. Another tip is to only buy things during designated periods of time. So right now, I'm trying not to buy clothing because I'm doing Project 333, and I'm going to do that through the end of December, so it works out well because it's going through the end of Christmas, and that's good because I'll be bringing in a lot more things after the holidays with gifts from people, and then at that point, anything that I feel like I do still need or want, I can buy as the new season is beginning. So for clothing in particular, it might help to shop at the beginning of a new season because again you're waiting until the need arises so when you buy things in anticipation of a need you might think that you need like a heavier coat than you really do because it turns out the weather isn't as bad that year. Now I know you're thinking that shopping at the beginning of a season is when everyone else shops so you're not going to get the good deals right like you want to shop at the end of summer for summer clothes to get the good deals. No! Nope! Wrong, nope, because you think that you're gonna wear those things next summer, but you're really just buying them because they're on sale. It's not a great idea to organize when and what you're buying based on when it's on sale. You end up saving more money in the long run, I think, if you learn how to buy only the things that you want and need, even if that means buying them at full price, even if that means buying the highest quality version of that thing at full price. As long as you're not buying all the crap that you didn't need, in the end, 
it ends up working out better. So my final tip is to make a wish list of all of the things that you want and need, and then you only buy the things that are on that wish list. And if you see something else and you want it, maybe you can put it on the wish list, but you don't buy it right away. You put it on the wish list and then you have an idea of, okay, these are the missing pieces of my wardrobe or whatever the thing might be. I know I always use clothes as an example. It's because A, it's a good example and B, it is everything that I love and everything I wanna buy all the time. So here comes the fun part. I'm now gonna share with you the items on my clothing list, wish list. So these are all the things that I am using willpower right now to not just immediately buy. Well, willpower and also the fact that I don't have enough money to buy all of these things at once, obviously. So I organize mine into need and want. Uh, the need things are just slightly more practical. I, I don't think there's anything that I like desperately need right now or I'm gonna die, but it's good to have an idea of what's a priority so that you can buy those things first. That said, my want list is much longer and much more colorful and fun than my need list, so we'll get to that one next. So here's need for me. White jeans, gray jeans, black leather pants, all of these, I know specifically which ones I want, and they're all from J. Brown. White jeans, gray jeans, black leather pants. And I haven't bought them yet because they're from J. Brown, which means they're very expensive. So good on me for having that expensive taste, as always. Yay! A striped maxi or midi skirt. If you've stuck around for a while, you might have seen a bit of my tribulation with having this black maxi skirt that was okay, I didn't really love it, and so then I got rid of it because I found this other one that I liked, but that one was too big and I was gonna sew it up to fit me properly. Well, I did sew it, but I didn't like the way that it worked out after that, so now I don't have one at all. I also want a pleated maxi or midi skirt. This is just another thing that I really coveted for a while, and it's on the need list because I think it fills a space in my wardrobe. Cashmere turtleneck. I love sweaters, obviously, and I don't have any turtlenecks at the moment. Swimsuit that's not as nice. It's kind of a weird one. I have a swimsuit that I absolutely love, and my parents have a pool and hot tub in their backyard, and their hot tub just has cement on the seat instead of tile, so it picks at the fibers of your swimsuit and destroys dreams. So what I do when I go there is I always put like a towel into the hot tub and sit on it, which is just like a total pain in the ass. And I decided that what would be better is if I could find a swimsuit that I like, okay, but I don't mind it getting totally ruined so I can wear it when I'm over there. Short sleeve black and white striped tee. This is another one where I have something that's holding that place in my wardrobe right now, but it's not the ideal version. I want one with thinner stripes than the one that I have now, so I'm just keeping my eye out for it. And finally, a Chanel wallet on chain. So, I talked about this in my What's In My Bag video. I'm big on taking my wallet out and just going into places with my wallet. So I realized that a wallet on chain would be perfect for me. I've always wanted something Chanel, and this is much more inexpensive than a Chanel bag, and it works out with my lifestyle better. So my idea is that I'm going to save and buy it for myself for my 30th birthday. And right now I just have a placeholder wallet. Now we get into the want list, oh yeah. Uh, Moto jeans, they're just cute. Uh, these Emerson Fry fold over crotch pants, my god, those are cute. A blanket scarf, beautiful luggage. I have a suitcase, but it's, you know, it's not fashiony or cute in any way, so it's working, I don't need luggage necessarily by any means, but one day it might be nice to have luggage that makes me really happy when I look at it, so that's on the list. Uh, these two are tribal earrings. I have some that are similar, they're like a knockoff or inspired by, but they're smaller. The, I, I like wear them all the, all the, all the, all the time, and then these are real pearls, so I think it could be a fantastic, like, mainstay of my jewelry collection, so maybe I'll get those one day. I love this Heart Rodarte, or Harte sort of t-shirt, I've wanted that for a while. The Comme de Garçon striped tee. I've become obsessed with the idea recently of getting some like sequin dolphin shorts like these, <laughs> so sometimes I'll see something on a blogger and I just love it so much. And what I used to do is I would immediately search for it and buy it online, and now I add it to the list. So. 
eventually I will either find them or I will get over it and not be interested anymore. One of those things is going to happen. I really want this Dmitry Sholokov dress, either this one or this one. I loved him on Project Runway and I've been sort of eBay stalking it for a long time and I will definitely be snatching that up if it shows up. I want a black leather fanny pack, like a cute fashion-y one. Uh, again, this is like a very uh, low priority thing because it's one of those things where I love it but uh, again, I'm not sure how often I would actually wear it so I would definitely spend a small amount of money on it and kind of test the waters and I don't know if I'll even do that but I want to put it on the list because the thing is when you get obsessed with something like that, you put it on your list and then it cools the obsession so that you don't bubble over and end up going and, and trying to buy all of the things that you're obsessing with. It's like when I put something on the list, I feel like I've checked it off my to-do list and there's that thing done and then I can kind of let go of it. So some of them will get purchased and some of them never will. The point is, I've sort of dealt with the desire. I'd like some kind of crossbody evening bag. I have a gold clutch, like a little vintage clutch that I use most of the time when I'm doing like cocktail attire, but I like the idea of a hands-free situation, so I'd love to find a crossbody one that I love. I also love these Alexander Wang Cory ankle boots. I've loved them forever, but I think I'm probably never going to get them because they don't fill a gap in my wardrobe. I have black ankle boots that I love, so... Can't stop thinking about the Corys though, so they do have a place on the wish list. Now I get into some shoes that are filling holes in my wardrobe and I don't want to fill those gaps or buy those shoes until I find some really beautiful high quality ones. So I've recently discovered that I love the idea of buying pre-loved designer shoes. Because if you buy designer shoes, they're going to lose their value anyway because you walk around on them. So they're not a great investment piece. So you might as well buy ones that have already lost their value at a discounted rate rather than buying the shoes that sort of, you know when you buy a car and they say it immediately loses its value when you drive it off the lot, right? Like if you buy a pair of Louboutins, the moment that the red on the bottom of the sole gets scuffed, like it's going to lose like 25% of its value that day. So you might as well buy the pre-loved ones. So the first one is uh, high quality nude pointy heels like these. I have a pair that are from Target that I wear a lot and that's where I've discovered that this is a thing that is a big heel for me. So the ones from Target are crap because they're from Target and it would make a lot of sense since these are something that I wear all the time to eventually invest and have them be high quality. I'd also like some strappy gold heels. Another thing I've discovered about myself while wearing lower quality heels is that gold is sort of the go-to, goes with everything, evening color. It's like nude for the daytime. I feel like gold is like the sparkled up version of that, but both of them are really in neutral. So those will both be getting a lot of wear and then also a pair of high quality black booties which is really great for dressing up and evening things in the winter time. So those all go hand in hand. Now we're getting, we're getting really into the like expensive ones now, so just strap in. Chanel mesh bow tie booties. These came out in, I want to say 2008, and they're pretty much my holy grail shoe. Like, I think they're so amazing. These shoes, I haven't stopped thinking about since I saw them for the first time about seven years ago. So if that tells you anything, they're on the list. I also love this Mandy Coon bunny bag. It's just fun. It's just fun. I love it. Celine. Okay, here are my very big Celine ones that I love. I love the trapeze. Probably my favorite. I love the box bag and I also love the trio. An Hermes Gige clutch. Absolutely love this clutch. And it's one of the lower priced things that you can find when you go vintage. Uh, the Hermes Kelly bag. Again, like this is probably something I'll never buy in my whole life, but I might. It's important to know which are the ones that you love. So like, are you a Kelly person or are you a Birkin person? If there's any chance that at some point in your life you might want to buy an Hermes bag, you should decide whether it's going to be a Kelly or whether it's going to be a Birkin 
so that you can sit with that for a few years and then you won't make the wrong choice. I mean, at least that's how I like to do things. I'm this way about tattoos too. I have ideas in my mind for what my tattoo would be and then I just sit on them for years and don't do it because I want to be wanting it for years before I do it so that I won't regret it. Alright, almost at the end. All that's left now is this black Hermes Collier de Chien cuff, which I love, and the white Hermes enamel cuff, which I love, and an Hermes silk scarf of some kind. So, got really hermes there at the end. Um, we all have our obsessions. I just hope that you enjoyed taking a look at my clothing wish list and hearing some of my tips for keeping that desire in check and really controlling how much you spend and when and what you buy and making sure that everything that you buy is something you really love. So if you found this video interesting or helpful at all, I would super appreciate it if you click the thumbs up right down there. That helps other people find me. And if you want to hear more from me and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you click subscribe right down there. That would also be fantastic. Share this video on social media if you would be so kind. That is also really appreciated. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hi, this is Celeste from Bookish and Bell. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how much we all spend on clothing. So one thing you'll find when you start to declutter in your life is obviously that you're not spending as much and bringing in more things because you've really reevaluated what you need and you'll end up saving a lot of money that way, which is great. This is actually sort of the number one benefit to minimalism that I didn't really think about in advance and I know that sounds silly because probably a lot of people start